This video is concerning a, a question that was posted on the comment section of one of my videos. And the, the question was concerning an electrical generator that this person had bought. And they wanted to know if the AC waveform coming out of their generator was similar or comparable to the AC waveform coming out of their electrical wall outlet. And they wanted to know if the hand tech was up to the task. If you're watching this video to find out if you can use the hand tech to directly measure the voltage coming out of a wall outlet, the answer is no. Do not do this. Do not use your hand tech to directly measure the voltage out of a wall outlet. You will damage your hand tech, you may hurt or even kill yourself, and you probably will damage the computer you're using with the hand tech and any USB device that 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 the computer is using. So do not do this, I do not recommend it. You will hurt yourself or hurt your equipment. But there is a safe way to do it and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. First, let's understand what it is we're dealing with. Why can't you just plug in the hand tech directly into a wall, wall outlet? What can happen? Well. The Hantec has a maximum rating or a maximum input rating of about 25 volts. I'm not sure if it's exactly that, but that is a good rule of thumb. That's what I use, 25 volts. I will not put any more than 25 volts into my Hantec. I won't do it. And the, if you live in North America at least, the wall outlet puts out approximately 120 volts AC. So obviously there's a big discrepancy here. There is 120 volts AC, where, whereas the hand tech takes a maximum of 25 volts. So let's just write this out. This hand tech max input. So straight away you can see that there's a huge problem, but the problem may be bigger than you think. If we were to take a wall outlet, I, well, not a wall outlet, but an extension cord that's plugged into a North American wall outlet. And you were to measure the voltage. Let's do, set it to AC, because AC outlet, AC voltage. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay. We get 120 volts AC, exactly. Perfect. So we can see just from that, that the outlet puts out 120 volts AC. Now, as many of you know, AC stands for alternating current. What that means is that if you were to uh, see the waveform of the voltage coming out of an outlet, it would look something like this. Now, the voltage goes to some high voltage, some positive voltage, and then goes down to some negative voltage with the zero point being there. Some people believe, or a lot of people believe, when you have 120 volts AC, or when you measure 120 volts AC, that means that the maximum voltage is 120, and the minimum voltage is negative 120. That is not the case. It is, does not go from positive 120 and go from negative 120. In fact, it is actually much higher than that. And we can actually see that with this same voltmeter. <clears throat> Since I'm looking at absolute voltage, I want to see I want to see what the absolute maximum voltage and the absolute minimum voltage is. I'm actually going to set this to DC. DC measures all voltage. It does not discriminate. It doesn't look for AC or DC. It just measures everything. And I'm going to set the range to 600 because you have to set the range manually if you're gonna use this next feature, the min-max function. So the min-max function, what it does is, is whatever voltage I input, it holds the highest voltage. So as I'm measuring the voltage of the outlet, it will see what the highest is, record it, and then see what the lowest is, and then record that. So I'm looking for these peaks and troughs. Let's see what we get. So if I plug this in, I get a max of 167 and a min of 167.2. So I'm going from positive 167 to negative 167, which is much higher than the 120. So this is not the case. It goes 167 to negative 167. So this changes everything. We don't need to protect our hand tech from 120 volts. 
we actually need to protect it from 167 volts, which is obviously much higher. To do this, to accomplish this task, we use something called an attenuator. And what an attenuator is, is it's something that divides the voltage. And the way it divides the voltage is using something called a, a resistor network or a voltage divider. So inside of this hand tech, this 20 to 1 uh, attenuator, there are a pair of resistors. And these resistors divide the voltage by 20. If you'd like a more in-depth uh, explanation of how the resistor network inside of this uh, Hantec attenuator uh, divides the voltage, uh, let me know in the comments and I will make a video specifically addressing this. <clears throat> the important thing to know is that when you have some input voltage, some input V, and then pass it through an attenuator, that is, in this case, a 20 to 1 attenuator, the output voltage will be 1 20th of the input, or the input divided, uh, or the input voltage divided by 20. So if you were to input this 167, or just this waveform in general, the maximum voltage that you will see is 167 divided by 20, and the minimum will be negative 167 divided by 20. And let's get the handy any calculator, we get 167 divided by 20, 8.35. So you would get a maximum of 8.35 volts inputted and a minimum of 8.35 volts, which is well within the range of the 25 volts that the hand tech can, can absorb or can see. It cannot be input more than 25 volts. So the 8.35 is just fine. But there is a problem. The hand tech attenuator plugs in like this. This is the input. This would be the output. Here on the input, you can use something like this. This little adapter plugs into here. And then you can use whatever leads fit this. So for example, you could use leads like this. Whatever voltage you measure with these leads, it will be inputted here, divided by 20, and then outputted here. So if you were to measure, let's say, 20 volts here, what will be inputted would be 1 volt. If you were to measure 200 volts, what would be inputted here would be 10 volts. But the way that this attenuator divides the voltage, it is not safe to use directly on AC voltage. And I'm going to explain why. If we were to use uh, an ohmmeter, this... Uh, multimeter also works as an ohm meter, we can see the different resistances of different objects. So for example, the leads themselves have 0.2 ohms. We have something like, here I have <clears throat> a 220 ohm resistor. We were to measure the resistance of this resistor. We get 219.5, almost 220. Since the attenuator uses resistances to divide out the voltage, we can actually see what those resistances are. So if we take the input of the hand tech and measure it against the output here, we get one mega ohm, 1.002 uh, million ohms. And if we uh, measure between the negative input and the negative output, we get 0 0.2. It's a direct short. There is absolutely no resistance in the negative part of the attenuator. The only resistance is between the two positive uh, inputs. I mean, excuse me, the two, uh, the input and the, the positive pole of the input and the output, and inside for other reasons, there is also a resistor between 
the output and the negative rail. But between the two negative rails, there's absolutely no resistance, nothing. Which means if you were to plug in this attenuator and then start measuring voltages uh, or start measuring AC voltages from a wall outlet, just like this, and you were to plug in this negative part, which is connected to all these here, you will have live voltage going into your hand tech here. What makes this worse is that it won't just be this channel here connected to live voltage. It'll also be the rest of these uh, pins here too. So if we set this uh, voltmeter to continuity test, meaning whenever these are touching or are electrically connected, for example, touching this pick here, it'll beep. And if we check all of these, all of these are electrically connected too, which means if you were to plug this in here and then check this ground lead here, this is the ground lead connected to the hand tech, connect that there, you will have direct continuity to all of these, all of these pins, every spot here, which means this cannot be connected to live. You connect this to live, everything here will be live, including the including the negative rail of the USB output. And let me show you that here. Let's get my leads organized. We hook up one end to here and the other end there, continuity. So if you were using this attenuator to measure the AC voltage, your hand tech will be protected, meaning it will not um, become damaged, but if you hook this onto live and you were to be leaning on here or touching this, or for example, if there was some kind of light connected to the USB port or even a mouse or something like that, that mouse could be live. You do not want to connect, you do not want to ch check live voltage using just this setup here. That it would be very, very dangerous. What you will need is something called an isolation transformer. An isolation transformer looks just like almost any other transformer. I don't own an isolation transformer, but I do have these. These are transformers. They will look something like this. These are step-down transformers. They'll take the, uh, the main voltage from the AC voltage and step it down to a much lower voltage. This, is, this will step it down to uh, 16 volts. This will step it down to 12 volts or 6 volts, depending how you set it up. But basically, there is uh, an input. If we ignore the ground here, there is an input. The black would be live, the white would be neutral, and then there's an output. The fact that a transformer uses two separate windings or coils to connect, uh, to um, step down the voltage makes it much safer than not using one. So for example, here, this would be connected to the, uh, to the live. This would be connected to the AC from your outlet and this is what you would use to power up whatever you're going to power up. The windings themselves are separated. They're not touching. The only thing that's quote unquote connecting them is the iron core that goes around it. The magnetic flux of the windings or that's created by the AC voltage going through the windings transfers the energy to the other coil. There is no direct touching. There's no uh, electrical conductivity between uh, one part of the transformer and the other. Now, this is a step-down transformer. This takes the 120 
uh, volts of the wall outlet and, uh, and converts it to uh, 12 volts. So there is uh, there are 10 times as many windings on the input than there is on the output. You actually see there is this part is much, much thicker than this part. Now that is important because if you don't have a live uh, wire connected anywhere near your oscilloscope, you cannot have any part of your oscilloscope or your computer's network live. So here I drew this out. <clears throat> if this is the uh, live and the neutral coming in to your, this would be your, let me draw the isolation transformer. The blue box is the isolation transformer. Write this out. Isolation transformer. The magnetic field that is created by the AC uh, voltage going through this coil transfers itself to this coil here. Since nothing here is touching, the AC voltage coming out of here is no longer referenced to the earth. Remember, when the AC is generated, it is generated at some kind of power plant. And that power plant has the generator, and that generator is referenced literally to the Earth. Literally to planet Earth. It's a reference to planet Earth. And sends the AC voltage to your house. Your house is also referenced to the Earth. And if you, are, if you were to touch the AC line here, this would be you here, and you were to touch the AC line, the voltage would go through your body to the Earth. But if this live wire goes through some kind of uh, transformer, These two wires here are in no way referenced to the Earth anymore. And if you were to, again, you here again, touch either of these wires, you would be okay. As long as you don't touch both at the same time. If you touch both at the same time, then you're completing the circuit. But if you just touch one or the other, then you'll be okay. So, what we've learned here today, I'm going to actually have a wrap-up sheet here is do not plug scope directly to wall outlet. The first thing you will need is an isolation transformer. I don't have one here but they do look very similar to this or this. That's to completely isolate yourself from the mains voltage of your house. Next thing you will need is a set of high voltage leads. You need leads that are rated to at least 600 volts, but preferably a thousand volts. I don't know if you can see that there, but it says cat to 1000 volts. That's what you want. You want 1000 volt leads. There are 600 volts out there. They'll work just fine. I would not, do not use the ones that came with your hand tech. You want some good quality leads. Then some way of course to <clears throat> attach those leads, but I have seen some uh, high voltage leads that connect directly to the BNC adapter, so you can use those too. Then, of course, you need an attenuator. A 20 to 1 is ideal. And, of course, a little common sense. When you're hooking up your isolation transformer, make sure not to touch any of the uh, live wires. And also make sure that on, that on the output, you do not touch uh, both of the AC outputs. You touch both of these outputs here and you will have 120 volts across your body and it's just as bad as you touching the live wire so do not do this if you guys have any questions if I wasn't clear about anything at all please uh, write a comment I will try to respond to you I pretty much respond to everybody within a day or two uh, just look at the common history of my videos I always try to answer questions um, on a more personal note uh, I am actually I'm going to start making more videos because uh, I'm now going to be going to 
school, I'm actually going to be finishing my degree in uh, electrical engineering. And I'm going to have a bit more time because I'm no longer going to be working in the automotive field. I'm still going to be working on cars here and there um, on my own, but I'm not going to be working full time on them anymore, which will leave me a bit more time to focus on this. I really do enjoy making these, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you guys learned something today. If there was anything at all that was not clear, please let me know. And uh, if there's anything you would like another video on, let me know as well. Thank you. Here we have the Handtech software. I'm going to be showing you how to check the AC waveform. I'm going to show you what it looks like more specifically. Uh, first things first, always do a calibration. Just uh, short the leads together while you're doing the calibration and just wait for it to finish. Uh, I do not have an isolation transformer, so I'm going to be doing it with just the, just the attenuator. And again, like I showed in the video, it, this can be very dangerous. I have the red lead on the live wire and I have the black lead on the neutral, uh, but this can easily get very dangerous very quickly. So I'm only doing it for a few seconds. I do not recommend you do this. Do not do this without an isolation transformer. You can get very hurt. So let's see what this looks like. I chose a time per division of five milliseconds. With that, I should be able to get a few bumps of the waveform. I'm gonna set the uh, trace down to the middle to uh, be able to see both the positive and the negative. I'm choosing 20 to 1 because that's the type of attenuator I'm choosing and I'm setting the volts per division to 100. And I'm going to be setting the trigger to about uh, 180. I think that's going to be too high, but let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do some measurements. First measurement I'm going to do is, uh, is um, peak to peak. Let's see if we can find this here. Actually, let's do maximum first. See what the maximum is and the minimum, and let's have peak to peak after that. Then let's measure, let's see. Let's do frequency and RMS. That's good. Uh, I didn't cover RMS in the video. It stands for uh, root mean squared. If you want more information on RMS, uh, let me know, and I will... Uh, do a video on that. So here we can see the waveform. I actually did put the trigger too high. Let me lower it a little bit so we can get a nice clean waveform. And you can see the AC sine wave there. Now I think there is something wrong with the electrical in my house. It should not look like that. It should look like a much cleaner waveform. Uh, let's see. Let's try this again. Let's... There we go. Yeah, let's see. It doesn't look very clean there. Uh, let's actually, let's see if we can see more bumps. Let's try, let's see, 100 milliseconds per division. We can see a lot more uh, peaks there. You can see the frequency, 60 hertz, the V-min, 167, the V-max, 165, peak to peak, 233, RMS, 120. So thank you guys for watching this. Uh, I appreciate uh, all your views. I uh, can't wait to hear more of your comments and questions and uh, thanks again.